Hi, my name is Ed Shad, curator of the Broad Museum in Los Angeles. And today I want to talk to you about Jasper John's painting, Watchmen from 1964. You may know Jasper John's from his famous flag and target paintings from the mid to late 1950s. We have an example of a John's flag at the Broad. And when you visit that work at the museum, you might notice that the work is concerned with the difference between an image and an object. The flag is painted in encaustic, or paint mixed with wax. It is the image of a flag. However, the flag is also an object. It is made from stretcher bars and canvas. You can hang it on the wall. So the painting asks the question, what is the difference between an image of a flag and the flag as an object? Is there a difference? If there is a difference, what may that difference be? Johns would later go on to ask similar questions about color. There is, for instance, the physical phenomenon of color. We see a fire truck and identify its distinguishing hue as the color red. We see grass and use the word green. However, the words red and green do not really have anything to do with the stimuli that makes an impression on our eye. Instead, we have chosen to call the color of the fire truck red. The word red is an agreed upon convention used so we can communicate with each other. Johns has a great painting called False Start 1959 where he presents this nature of color and language. In the painting, he gesturally paints various colors. Then he stencils the words of colors onto the painting. However, the words and the pigments do not match. Painted on top of the color blue, we find the word red. And on the color yellow, it gets even more out of sync. Here, John stencils the word yellow, as perhaps we think he should, but the word yellow is painted blue. There is a tension in John's between physical things, things in the world, and the methods we use to make sense of those things. The colors and codes of False Start appear again in Watchmen, which Johns painted in Tokyo in 1964. To the right of Watchmen, we see three blocks of the primary colors, red, yellow, and blue, which some writers have likened to an artist's color palette. On the left, we see the words for these colors listed in black, or at least part of them. At the top, the letter R stands for red, Y in the middle for yellow, and BL at the bottom for blue. However, this palette and the words used to describe it seem to be interrupted, to be exploded apart by a flying chair. This chair, seen in the right-hand corner, seems to have either been ejected from the painting or potentially falling into it. At the bottom, we find a stick, which has apparently pushed a ball across a shelf, dragging a trail of black and white paint behind it. Once the chair has, presumably, taken flight, the middle of the painting then seems the messy outcome of that event. The colors have mixed red and yellow into orange, blue and yellow into green, and all three colors, red, yellow, and blue, into gray. So what is going on in Watchmen? For years, I would tell myself when I looked at this painting that there was a lot going on that the painting was full of activity and action, that it was an explosive, expressive field, much like a Jackson Pollock would be. However, my interpretation felt a bit off, much like the word yellow painted with the color blue. In fact, though there are all sorts of implications of action in Watchmen, the painting doesn't actually move. The chair doesn't actually eject. 
it merely gives you evidence that it has done so. The painting sets up the idea of action, of movement, but it is your mind that completes that circuit. Instead, it would be more accurate to say that Watchmen is held in a sort of suspended animation. It pretends to be active, but isn't, much in the same way that a wax leg might uncannily seem to be alive, but is not alive. Watchman seems caught between painting's wish to convey life and its inability to entirely do so. Perhaps it is best to think about what Johns wrote in his notebook in 1964 as he prepared to produce this work. He wrote about the difference between a watchman or a security guard who waits and watches for an event to happen and a spy or a person who actively seeks information, who takes action in the world to fulfill the meaning of their life. This seems a fitting place to reflect on the painting watchman, for the painting watchman is indeed a place between waiting and acting. It is indeed a place between stasis and movement. It wants to move. It implies that it can move, but it doesn't.